Grade 12 Physics, Special Relativity, Note 1. Introduction to Special Relativity. By the end of the 1800s, most of physics was thought to be known. In fact, if you were a student entering a physics program at a university, the professors would ask you, what are you thinking? We mostly knew uh, most about motion and gravity. That was contributed from Newton. Newton actually also contributed a lot to the optics field. Number two, electromagnetism. Electricity and magnetism was unified from Maxwell in the middle of the 1800s. And that was a lot to do with um, the stuff that Faraday found out um, or before that. And number three, most of thermodynamics was thought to be known. That was contributed from Ludwig Boltzmann. Even though we knew all that stuff, there were still a few remaining questions. Number one, what's inside of an atom? Um, there was the billiard ball model and the raisin bun model, but other than that, we really didn't know what was going on. And number two, why does Mercury perturb in its orbit? Meaning, when Mercury orbits the Sun, it makes a little perturbation. It looks like a spirograph. Newton's laws of gravity couldn't explain what was going on. So a new theory was needed. These were the two big remaining questions in physics. So two new theories would have to be created to explain them. For the atom, eventually in the early 1900s, we would come up with quantum theory that would explain what goes on inside of an atom. And for Mercury's perturbation, we would use relativity, which is something that we're going to study in this unit. So a frame of reference. This is something we have to pat down before we start. A frame of reference is um, just a, an origin of which to view motion. So if we have an inertial frame of reference, that's something that's at rest or constant velocity which means all the laws of physics hold true. If you throw a ball up um, in a frame of reference at a rest or constant velocity, we can calculate the height, the time, etc. If we're accelerating in a non-inertial frame of reference, new Newtonian mechanics do not apply if that acceleration is unknown. So if we don't know that acceleration, we're not going to be able to use the laws of physics to calculate how high or how far or how long a ball is in the air. So this law, this law allows for any observer to assume their reference frame is at rest while everything moves around it. What that means is um, if you're at a bus stop and you can assume you're at rest while a bus goes by your seat versus if you're sitting on the bus, you can also assume you're at rest while the world around you moves past the windows. So two observers in that um, situation both of those observers can assume that they're at rest. This can be applied to any situation. So for any reference frame, two speeds can always be agreed upon. Number one is the speed of light. Everybody can always assume that the speed of light is an exact number and it will not change um, according to whatever reference frame you're in. The second thing is you can always know your speed relative to something else. Um, if something else is moving relative to you, you can always know the comparable speed between. 